the Autobots were driven from their home planet of Cybertron by the Decepticons. They didn't give up hope. They established a new base on planet Earth and instantly began to make plans to recapture Cybertron from their enemies. Unknown to the Autobots, however, there was a Decepticon spy in their midst, Laserbeak. When they were almost ready to move, he carried the news to Megatron, leader of the Decepticons, who wasted no time. The battle was on again, and this time there was yet another enemy against the Autobots, the giant metal planet, Unicron. Transformers, the movie. For many years, things had gone badly for the Autobots. They had fought hard against their enemies, the Decepticons. In the end, they had been driven from their home planet, Cybertron. But the Autobots never gave up hope. They made their base on planet Earth. They made friends with an Earth boy, Spike. In the course of time, they were poised to recapture Cybertron. Two of Cybertron's moons were Autobot outposts. Moonbase 1 was military headquarters for the invasion, and Moonbase 2 was a forward observation post, manned by Bumblebee and Spike, now a grown man. On Moonbase 1, Ironhide watched the monitor patiently, while the Autobot commander, Optimus Prime, studied the invasion plan. All the Autobots required now was a supply of Energon cubes to power the invasion force. Ironhide spoke. Well, I'm tired of this waiting, Prime. When are we gonna start busting Decepticons? Listen, Ironhide, we don't have enough Energon cubes to power a full-scale assault, said Optimus Prime. I want you to make a special run to Earth for another supply. Prepare the shuttle for launch. In a short time, the shuttle was ready. Optimus Prime watched as it blasted off. All we need, he said, is a little energon and a lot of luck. Just as he spoke, a cassette ejected from a console behind him. Unseen by Prime, it transformed into the Decepticon spy, Laserbeak, who hurtled at top speed down to the surface of Cybertron to report to his leader, Megatron. Megatron made his plans and issued his orders. The Decepticon spaceship lifted off from Cybertron, packed with Decepticons. In the Autobot shuttle, Prowl and Ironhide sat at the controls. Cybertron was dropping behind fast, when, without warning, a section of the shuttle wall exploded under a blast of laser fire. Decepticons poured in, and in moments the Autobot crew had been overcome. Megatron was triumphant. <laughs> we will slip through Autobot security in their own shuttle. Autobot City will be destroyed. The Autobots will be vanquished forever. On the other side of the galaxy, on planet Earth, all was peaceful. Near Autobot City, a boy and an Autobot were fishing. The boy was Daniel, the young son of Spike, and the Autobot was his best friend, Hot Rod. Daniel was looking glum. He missed his father, far away on Moonbase 2. The shuttle from Cybertron is coming, he said. Let's watch it land. Hot Rod transformed, and they sped to a lookout point on a mountain high above Autobot City. Daniel was watching the shuttle make its approach run through a telescope when he cried, Hot Rod, something's wrong! There's a hole in the shuttle! Hot Rod looked up. Decepticons! He cried. In seconds, the battle for Autobot City was raging. The city transformed with fortress guys, and the defenders fought furiously against Megatron's army of Decepticon warriors. But they were outnumbered, and soon they were forced to fall back. Ultra Magnus, city commander, sent a message to Optimus Prime to come to their help. Even as the message was going out, the Decepticons destroyed the Autobot communications center. Megatron prepared for the final attack as the mighty Devastator tore down the city defenses. 
Then, with a roar of jets, Optimus Prime's relief force swept in over the battle. Autobots spilled from the shuttle, firing as they charged to the attack. The Decepticons found themselves caught in a deadly crossfire. It was their turn to fall back. Optimus Prime charged at the head of the warriors. Suddenly, in front, stood his arch enemy, Megatron. At last, cried Optimus Prime. One shall stand, one shall fall. Then the two gigantic robots fell upon each other. Both were badly damaged by the time that Prime, with a last burst of strength, sent Megatron crashing from high on the city walls to the ground far below. There was a brief flicker of electricity. Then the Decepticon leader lay still. Starscream raced up with the remainder of the Decepticon force. Astro Train! He cried. Transform and get us out of here! Soundwave picked up the battered Megatron and carried him aboard. Then Astro Train blasted off in a hail of Autobot fire in full retreat back to Cybertron. As the dust of battle settled, the Autobots gathered about their fallen leader. His metalwork was scorched and dented. Only a faint glow from his eyes showed that he was still functioning. Optimus Prime was dying. In a faint voice, he said, Do not grieve. Ultra Magnus, it is to you, old friend. I shall pass the matrix of leadership as it was passed to me. I am not worthy of it, said Ultra Magnus. I am just a soldier. You will keep it, continued Optimus Prime, until the day that an Autobot steps from your ranks and uses the power of the Matrix to light our darkest hour. He opened the compartment in his chest and lifted out the crystal of pure energy. Then his strength failed and it dropped from his hand. Hot Rod caught it and passed it to Ultra Magnus. The new leader placed the glowing matrix in his own body cavity. As he looked down at Optimus Prime, his eyes began to shine with power. Optimus Prime's own eyes grew bright for a moment, then faded and went blank. He was dead. Out in the endless blackness of space, the passing of Optimus Prime flickered across a bank of monitor screens inside a strange planet-like object as big as a small world, the ringed and snow-capped metal sphere moved not in a planetary orbit, but in a straight line towards Cybertron. Aboard Astrotrain, the Decepticons were recovering from their defeat. The shuttle Decepticon labored on full power. Starscream had taken charge, and Astrotrain spoke urgently to him. If we don't jettison some weight, we'll never make it as far as Cybertron. You heard what he said, said Starscream, looking round. It's the survival of the fittest, said Bone Crusher. Next moment, a side entry port was open, and the unhurt Decepticons began to throw the wounded out into space. Starscream dragged Megatron to the port and hurled him out after the rest. <gasps> Lighter, Astrotrain blasted off leaving the others adrift in space. Out of the darkness loomed a planet. The wounded Decepticons drifted towards it. Suddenly, Megatron found himself held fast in a powerful magnetic beam. A deep voice spoke. Welcome, Megatron. I am Unicron. I have summoned you here for a purpose. You are to destroy the Autobot Matrix of Leadership. I will provide you with a new body and new warriors to command. In a blaze of energy, Megatron was reconstructed as the mighty Galvatron. The broken remains of the other Decepticons became aircraft transformers under the leadership of Scourge and Cyclonus. Lastly, Unicron produced an immense new spaceship to lead Galvatron's armada. Now go! Destroy the Autobot Matrix! roared the voice of the metal planet. Meanwhile, Astrotrain had made it safely back to Cybertron. 
After a lot of argument, the Decepticons had accepted Starscream as leader. But now he wanted to make his leadership official. He summoned every Decepticon to the Hall of Heroes. High above one end of the hall stood the throne of the Decepticons. As the crowd of Decepticons looked on, Starscream stood in front of the throne, making a speech. On his head, he wore a gold crown, and Thrust and Ramjet stood on either side of him. He paused for a moment. Like everyone else, he had heard the sound of distant jets. Then, suddenly, the hall was filled as Galvatron and his warriors poured in. Who disrupts my coronation? shouted Starscream. It is I, Galvatron, came the answer as Galvatron transformed to his cannon shape and blasted Starscream out of existence. As he transformed back, Starscream's crown rolled down the steps to the throne. Galvatron crushed it to fragments underfoot. After only a little hesitation, the assembled Decepticons cried together, Long live Galvatron! On Moonbase 1, Jazz and Cliffjumper looked out into space. Bearing down on them was a monstrous planet shape. Where'd that come from? cried Jazz. Who cares? shouted Cliffjumper. I'm more worried where it's going. Quickly, Jazz called up Earth. Talk to me, Earth. We got a situation out here. On Earth, repair work was going on at Autobot City. Blaster called. I'm getting a faint signal. He transformed, and the others listened to Jazz's voice. A weird-looking planet just showed up, and it's attacking Moonbase One. Back at Moonbase One, Jazz and Cliffjumper raced to their shuttle and took off as two giant claws gripped Moonbase One and began to drag it towards a vast circular opening. As the shuttle moved away, Moonbase One was crushed to fragments and sucked inside. A moment later, with engines still at full power, the shuttle was sucked in also. Spike and Bumblebee watched in horror from Moonbase 2. They had to do something. The base contained a great store of explosives. Setting a timer, they blasted clear in their shuttle. Once more, the claws gripped and drew in Moonbase 2. There came the roar of an explosion. It isn't even dented, cried Spike. And next moment, they, in turn, were drawn into the interior of the evil monster. Daniel sat on Arcee's shoulder and watched helplessly as a video monitor showed the fate of Moonbase 2. What about my dad? He cried. Daniel, we'll do everything we can for Spike, said Ultra Magnus. Autobots, prepare for takeoff. We must destroy this thing before it devours Cybertron. As they moved towards the shuttles, Springer pointed up and cried, Look! Diving to the attack were Galvatron and the Decepticons. At the same moment, the Dinobots lumbered up to help their friends. In a hail of fire, the Autobots boarded the two space shuttles followed by the Dinobots. Soon they left the Decepticons far behind, and the Autobots began to relax. In one shuttle, Cup put the controls on automatic while he told stories to Grimlock and the other Dinobots. Hot Rod put in some weapon practice with the Auto Combatant. The shuttles were cruising close past a large planet when the Decepticons struck again. The fight was fast and furious, and those in Ultra Magnus' ship saw the Dinobot shuttle suddenly spinning away, trailing smoke and flames as it took a direct hit from a Decepticon missile. The pursuing Decepticons swooped on the remaining shuttle. A cluster of missiles all struck at the same time, and the Autobot craft vanished in a blinding flash and a whirling cloud of fragments. The Autobots have been terminated! cried Cyclonus. As the Dinobot shuttle disintegrated, Hot Rod was thrown clear. 
he found himself tumbling through space towards the planet he had seen seconds before the attack. He hit its surface just off the coast of a wide sea and sank to the seabed. Instantly, he had to defend himself from a shoal of ferocious metallic fish. Fighting his way clear, he looked around him for a sign of the others. He saw nothing, but a sound came to him faintly through the water. It was Cup's voice calling for help. Hot Rod hurried in the direction of the sound and found Cup in the grip of a giant robot squid. The squid was pulling his victim apart. Hot Rod went to Cup's assistance. The squid gripped him in one of its tentacles, but a laser blast to the lens of one of its mechanical eyes sent it retreating in a cloud of black ink. Hot Rod gathered up the scattered transformer pieces and carried them to the shore. There, he reassembled his old friend, and Cup stood up and carefully tried all his moving parts. You did an amazing job, lad. Amazing. Then they transformed and set off to look for the Dinobots. The two Autobots raced across the strange planet. Suddenly, they skidded to a halt and transformed back to robot shape. Their way was barred by a band of ferocious-looking warriors. Cup and Hot Rod walked forward. Cup decided to try to make friends. Don't act hostile, he said to Hot Rod. And don't make any sudden moves. But his efforts were in vain. The warriors suddenly transformed into evil, shark-jawed creatures. They piled on top of the Autobots, then dragged them into a large complex where the two were locked in a barred cage. As the guards left, another prisoner looked through the bars of the adjoining cage. What is this place? asked Hot Rod. This is Quintesson, was the reply. It is the home of the Sharkticons who brought you here, and their masters, the Quintessons. They hunt down the enemies of Unicron, a monstrous thing which devours other worlds. I am the only survivor of the destruction of my home planet. Yeah, we've seen it, said Cup. Now we know its name. Suddenly the Sharkticon guards appeared again. They seized the other prisoner and dragged him away. I go to stand trial before the Quintesson ruler, he cried. But guilty or innocent, the sentence is always the same. Death! Soon it was the turn of Cup and Hot Rod. Their arms were bound to their sides with energy bonds, which also prevented them from transforming. Then they were led into the courtroom. A Quintesson with a rotating, many-faced head sat upon a high throne. The prosecutors stood below and waved long tentacles as Cup and Hot Rod were led onto a platform projecting high above a dark, water-filled pit. The prosecutor addressed the figure on the throne. Has your Imperial Majesty reached a verdict? Guilty or innocent? <laughs> innocent, said the figure on the throne and the platform dropped down, hurling Cup and Hot Rod towards the pit far below. Just as the two Autobots hit the water at the bottom of the pit, the energy bonds were released. A second later, they were attacked by a swarm of Sharktikons. Cup and Hot Rod fought off the monsters, but it was no use. Still, they kept coming. They've got more Sharktikons than we have photon charges cried Hot Rod. Come on, let's hold a demolition derby, cried Cup, transforming. The Sharktacons were bowled over right and left as Cup and Hot Rod slammed into them. Then, racing around the sides of the pit at top speed, the two Autobots shot to the surface and onto the floor of the trial chamber. The Sharktacons quickly followed, swarming out of the water. Although outnumbered, the Autobots still kept the Sharktacons at bay, piling them in heaps all around the sides of the pit and the walls of the chamber. The Quintesson prosecutor raged as he saw the Sharktacons being destroyed by the two Autobot prisoners. 
he left his position below the throne and rushed to the side of the pool to take command. But before he could issue a single order, there was a thunderous crash. The great metal doors to the chamber toppled inwards. The prosecutor vanished underneath the doors. The next moment, he was crushed completely by the mighty weight of the Dinobots, Slag, Sludge, and Grimlock as they trampled into the chamber and joined in the fight against the Shocktacons. Riding high on Grimlock's back was a small transformer. Now the Shocktacons were in retreat. From the throne came a furious cry. Sharktacons, execute them! Grimlock looked at the Sharktacons. Me, Grimlock, say, execute them! And he pointed to the rest of the Quintessons. It dawned on the Sharktacons that here was their chance to rid themselves of their Quintesson masters. Turning away from the Autobots, they swarmed across the chamber and up to the throne. As the Quintessons fled before the Sharktacons, Cup said, I think the problems on this planet will be solved very shortly. What about our problems? asked Hot Rod. We need a ship. A cheery voice chanted, You get a ship if I get a trip. Well, who are you? asked Hot Rod in surprise. Him wheelie, him friend, said Grimlock. Him help us find you. He'll be my friend, too, if he can find a ship, said Hot Rod. Wheelie had already found one for them. Beyond the walls of the Quintesson complex rose the shape of the strangest ship the Autobots had ever seen. Galvatron and his force sped through space to report to their master, Unicron, that Ultra Magnus and the Matrix had been destroyed. Little did they know that the Autobots were safe, if a bit crowded, in the command pod of their shuttle. An emergency separation had allowed them to escape while the Decepticons blasted the empty shuttle with their missiles. The pod, however, had not escaped without damage. Perceptor, can you locate a place we can set down for repairs? Asked Ultra Magnus. There's the planet Junkion, replied Perceptor. The battered shuttle swooped low over the junk-strewn surface of the planet and bounced and slithered to a halt. The Autobots started immediately on repairs. Daniel helped, clad in an exosuit once worn by his father, Spike. As they worked, they didn't see the Junkions observing them from among the heaps of junk. Suddenly, both Autobots and Junkions were startled by a roar of jets overhead. Decepticons! cried Ultra Magnus. We've got to draw them off and double back to the shuttle. But the first missiles blew the half-repaired ship to fragments. Trapped on the surface, the Autobots fought desperately as Decepticons came at them from all sides. The Autobots made a fighting retreat down a long valley. The junk piled on either side gave some protection from the Decepticon fire. Ultra Magnus brought up the rear. He waited until the Autobots were clear. Then, he fired his laser weapon to bring down some of the junk as a barrier behind them. Now, he stood alone before the fury of the Decepticon attack. From a ridge nearby, Galvatron watched. Ultra Magnus opened his chest compartment and took out the Matrix. It pulsed with power, but a special shield prevented its full power from being released. Ultra Magnus pulled, but the shield remained firm. Prime, he cried. You said the Matrix would light our darkest hour. Then, at a command from Galvatron, a flight of his evil warriors raced overhead, and a salvo of cannon fire blasted Ultra Magnus. Galvatron seized the Matrix with a cry of triumph, and the battle was over. The Decepticons withdrew victoriously as quickly as they had arrived. The Autobots looked in horror at the smoking remains of their leader. First, Optimus Prime, now Ultra Magnus, and the Matrix is gone, said R.C. What do we do? Before any of them could speak, there was a roar of motorcycle engines. The Autobots turned to see the Junkions racing to give battle among the rusting piles of junk. And once again, there came the sound of jet engines. 
Cruising over them was a weird spaceship. Familiar faces peered through the ports. Cup and Hot Rod with the Dinobots had arrived in the nick of time. As the Autobots disembarked, the Junkions watched suspiciously. But Hot Rod and Cup persuaded them that the Autobots meant no harm and finally made friends with them. After a while, Rekgar, the Junkian leader, announced that not only would they repair Ultra Magnus, but they would join forces with the Autobots in pursuing Galvatron, winning back the Matrix, and destroying Unicron. Galvatron stood on Unicron, the Matrix secured about his neck by a chain. Listen to me, Unicron, he said. I now possess that which you wanted destroyed. Don't underestimate me, Galvatron, came the voice from deep within the evil planet. Next moment, Galvatron fell to his knees as the surface upon which he stood began to shake. Unicron was moving forward towards Cybertron, and he was transforming into a gigantic, horned, winged demon. Reaching out, he began to tear at Cybertron with cruel, clawed hands. On the planet, the Decepticons scrambled to defend themselves. Galvatron transformed to his cannon shape and fired at Unicron. The monster picked Galvatron up between finger and thumb and swallowed him. As Decepticons swarmed around Unicron, the Autobots and Junkions dived to the attack. One giant hand crushed the Junkion ship to fragments. A blast of fire blew a large piece out of the Quintesson craft, and it crashed out of control through Unicron's eye and into the great mechanical head. Inside Unicron, the shattered Quintesson ship fell apart as it tumbled into the depths of the monster. The passengers were thrown out and landed in a heap, all except Hot Rod. Where is he? asked Daniel. I hope they didn't get him, cried Springer, as down from the roof there sprang long cables armed with snapping metal jaws. They writhed and grasped at Daniel and the Autobots. Darting and dodging, the Autobots ran clear, but Daniel stumbled and fell. In an instant, he was being attacked from all sides. R.C. turned and fired several rapid shots, and the cables were severed. But a stray shot smashed an overhead pipe. A roaring torrent of liquid swept Daniel off his feet and down a long passage. Struggling, Daniel was borne along by the liquid deep into Unicron. At last, he fought clear and found himself looking up at a conveyor belt high above his head. Captured Decepticons were hanging from the conveyor and being dropped one by one into a cauldron of boiling acid. He heard a shout. It was his father and the Autobots from the Cybertron moon bases. In a few more seconds, they too would drop into the seething acid and be destroyed. Daniel was desperate. He could see no way to stop the conveyor. Aiming the built-in weaponry of his exosuit, he pressed the firing button. At the very moment that Spike and the Autobots dropped from the conveyor, Daniel's shots shattered a hydraulic support and a metal cover slammed down over the fuming cauldron. I did it! cried Daniel as he saw his father and the others land safely on the cover. Out in space, the remaining Decepticons continued to attack Unicron. The Dinobots had regrouped and battered at the monster to get inside and rescue their friends. Deep inside Unicron, Hot Rod slowly got to his feet. He had fallen much farther than any of the others. He was in a wide chamber littered with twisted metal and broken machinery. A dazzling light appeared hanging in the shadows. The Matrix. Hot Rod took a step forward and saw that Galvatron had the Matrix. It will do you no good, Autobot, cried Galvatron. It cannot be opened. Not by a Decepticon, replied Hot Rod. The voice of Unicron echoed in the darkness. Destroy him or feel yourself torn limb from limb. 
Galvatron aimed a shot at Hot Rod, who transformed and raced away. Then he hurtled back to the attack. To and fro the fight raged. Then Galvatron leapt on Hot Rod as he transformed back into his robot shape. The Decepticon leader seized his enemy around the neck and squeezed. First Prime, then Ultra Madness, he snarled. And now you! It's a pity you Autobots die so easily, but I might have a sense of satisfaction now. Hot Rod's strength was ebbing rapidly as he looked up into the evil face of Galvatron. The Matrix hung on its chain, and as Hot Rod looked into the pulsing crystal, he heard in his mind the voice of Optimus Prime. Arise, Rodimus Prime! The Matrix glowed ever brighter within its shield. Power surged through the body of the fallen Hot Rod. With a mighty heave, he hurled Galvatron from him. Galvatron fired a shot, but it was deflected harmlessly by the Matrix. Hot Rod picked up Galvatron. For a moment, he held him above his head. This is the end of the road, Galvatron! He cried and smashed the Decepticon through the Unicron's metal side to be lost in the vastness of space. Now he picked up the Matrix. The shield came off easily in his hands. Unicron screamed as the power of the Matrix surged into him. Then he pulled himself apart as he tried to stop the terrible thing which was destroying every corner of his body. Daniel and Spike and the Autobots struggled through the collapsing wreck that had been Unicron. Suddenly, a tall and powerful Autobot stood before them. Their new leader, Rodimus Prime. He cried, Autobots, transform and roll out! I knew you had potential, lad! cried Cup. In a moment, the fleet of Autobot vehicles with Spike and Daniel aboard were racing for safety. With a splintering crash, they burst through Unicron's remaining eye. From Cybertron, the Autobots watched the evil Unicron explode into a million fragments. All that remained was the horned head orbiting the planet like a strange moon. The struggle was over. Under the leadership of Rodimus Prime, the Autobots could begin to rebuild their homes.